should be back. <coughs> uh, this is hopefully the start of um, me and Sam building a custom base for me. Uh, it's going to be a long process. Sam's doing the the main building part of it, uh, cutting out the body and making uh, the neck, the body, and between us we're going to get the design how I want it. Uh, and the only thing that I'll be doing really to it, apart from getting the design I want, um, I'll just be doing the final, very final finish. Um, yeah, so it, it's going to be a long process um, and it's no doubt going to evolve as it goes along and things will change um, and somehow I've got to get um, whatever footage Sam does at his place of him um, working on the, 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 the wood I've got to get that onto my channel and put them up in order so uh, as you can see really well prepared anyway um, we're going to start by um, stripping uh, all the hardware off uh, one of my other bases. Um, I'll explain it as we go along. Okay. Uh, okay, I can't see what the camera's doing. Um, this is a Honor the Jack base. It's a headless bass guitar with a Steinberger tuning system which is my favorite kind of system um, and what I'm looking to do is to have build my own base with this system on it pretty much this shape body but it's going to be a bit narrower um, it's going to be headless but it's going to have a short scale neck which I will show you okay my Fender my Squire Fender Squire Jaguar bass has a short scale neck uh, this is a 30 inch scale that's from the this side of the nut to where the uh, G-string crosses the saddle 30 inches exactly on my Honor and all the other bases that I've ever owned uh, it's pretty much it's 34 inches normally you'd have 34 inches plus the headstock um, which makes for a great big long heavy base particularly like on my jazz bases and various others that have got big bodies Anyway, I digress. What I want to do is have this headless system uh, with a short scale neck, which means this, we're basically gonna have this short neck from there to there, and this headless bit on the top of that. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna strip this so that we can copy the shape and measure all the bits for routing the um, the bridge the Steinberger bridge into this and I'm going to take this neck off of here um, and we're going to copy exactly the size and shape of this neck and then we're going to have a body which like I said it's going to be it's based on this the body it's just that that's the important measurement and that and, and this where the horn goes the rest of it I will shape as and when uh, yeah okay so I'll get on with stripping this one down to start with uh, when I've stripped this one I'll just take the neck off it luckily it is bolt on I'm going to go with a bolt on neck even though this is a, a set neck or a through neck I'm not quite sure it's either glued in or it's one piece I'm going to go with a bolt on neck for, the, for my custom base just because it's easy um, I can do maintenance on it um, if I ever get any problems with the neck I can just change the neck make a new one whatever 
Um, right. Um, I'll get rid of this and I'll sort of give you a rough idea of what of what we're building uh, controls wise and everything. Okay. Um, I don't like not being able to see what's on the what's on the video. Um, I've got my phone on a tripod, which means I can't see what's on the screen. Um, and I'm not sure about the picture quality. Um, the front camera seems to be worse quality than the selfie camera. So anyway, I might swap that round in a minute. Okay, back to this. Uh, right, like I said, based on this body. It's going to have to be shaped here and routed for this system. Um, the overall guitar is going to be, it'll evolve into whatever shape it's going to, but it's going to be slightly narrower than this. Um, it's going to have, I'm going to have one humbucker pickup in the middle. There's going to be no controls, no tone, no volume, nothing. It's just going to be one humbucker in the middle and an output jack. That is it. Um, because of the way I play and the style I do, um, I don't use these unless I'm recording and I've got plenty of other bases I can choose from for recording. But when I play live, as it were, I don't touch the controls, I have everything full on. So I've got both pickups full on and the tone just wound up. I do all of my sound on my two amps. Um, I have no need for any of these controls, which will make the build simpler. Uh, what won't be so simple is finding a single, uh, one humbucking pickup that will give me a full range of tones in the middle of the instrument. Um, I've had a few basses before which have had just that single pickup, uh, one of which was uh, the Court Kerbo and uh, I'm going to have to have a look back through some of my videos. I'm pretty sure the Court Kerbo had a Bartolini single humbucker pickup. Um, I might be wrong, I'm going to check. Um, it was either that or my PV International, but I think it was my Court Kerbo. Um, so that's my idea. Another thing is because 25% um, of the time I play slap bass, um, this area under the strings at the neck is going to be carved out to give me better access for my pinkies. Pinky, uh, my popping finger. Also, um, I'm going to have the truss rod adjuster this end um, because the type of string holder I'm going to use is not this one. I should have got it out. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, I'm not going to be using this string holder. Um, I'm going to be using one that allows me to use normal strings that aren't double ball ends. And on this guitar, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, I'm cheating now, looking at the other end of the camera. No light, of course. Uh, come on, let's have some light. Ah, oh, there you go. That's the access to the truss rod. Um, I'm just going to make it easier um, by having the truss rod access that way. It just means that we, we put the truss rod in the other way around. Uh, Right, let's start getting rid of stuff. Well, I'll show you how the system works, how we get rid of the strings. You literally just loosen these off. And then you've got that ball holding it at the bridge end. And at this end, which is actually a little bit broken, just another ball that holds in. So, because they only make double ball end strings for full scale, 34 inch scale, um, I'll be using normal strings and I have a little clamp that works this end with normal strings. 
So yeah, um, I like this system because it's really, really simple to change strings. And the other advantage is this system, um, just have to mess with that in a minute. This system here gives you a, a really good gear ratio. So fine tuning. Um, it's something like, uh, I didn't do my homework, it's something like 45 to one gear ratio. Um, on a set of really good tuners, um, standard headstock tuners, a set of really good ones, you'd get a ratio of maybe 18 to one. Um, and what it means is good tuning stability. Um, Right, so that's the strings off. Uh, I'm going to have a look at this, see if I can remember how it all bolts on. Well, if we're very lucky, I think this whole thing might just be held on with them five screws there. So if that's the case, that's really simple. Yes, just those, just those five screws holding it in. Right, uh, so there's the cavity we need to recreate. Uh, good to see a little earth, earth wire there. Uh, now, I need to take off these strap buttons uh, probably don't need to strip all this down but I'm going to because for one thing this output jack has got an issue and I need to change it so let's get this open and see what lurks beneath Okay, these screws are tiny. Normally if I was in the garage, I'd be uh, using one of my magnetic trays. Well, did these up tight. Some of these screws I've got to I've got to fix. These are tiny little grub screws, uh, so they go into captive captive nuts. But uh, what one, two, two of the captive nuts. Uh, are missing well one captive nuts missing there this captive nut is sunk down into the body so I need to find some more of these um, right a load of stuff uh, yeah I'm just gonna take it all out output jack I need to replace anyway so let's see how it all comes off these. Do we have any? Oh yeah, we have a tiny little Allen keys holding on these grub screws. Or that one anyway, these don't. Oh, there you go. Need to get an Allen key on that one. Go. These are all loose. Everything's filthy. But then again, this is 
Um, this is from the 1980s, this guitar. So, uh, not sure. Wrong. Completely wrong. Oops, stupid. Should have got the right spanner for that. Yeah, not sure how this one, this little red light comes out. Ah, I think there's a multi plug on the back of it, so it might be able to stay in there. Okay, lots of lots of washers on the back. I'm not being too careful with it because I'm going to go through all the wiring again. Um, yeah, I think you can see that red, the little. Give you some light. Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh, oh there you go. That little red LED on the front it's got this connector on it, so I'm hoping that connector will simply come off. I can leave the LED light in there. There you go, the whole light came out. It was just in. The bit that goes to the front is just a little a holder. <clears throat> um, okay, here's where I get in trouble. This output jack, it's got two black wires and one white wire. One of the black wires, <coughs> let me look, hang on a second. <coughs> All right, I've just messed up. Half of that video. Okay, big long bit of video with nothing going on. Oh, I'm now I'm fighting the tripod and the blackness of it all. Alrighty, um, pickups labeled them. Uh, wiring, I've cut one long, one short labelled where they go. Um, I might have enough length on these just to solder that back onto these pots or I will replace the wires or splice them or something, whatever. Whatever I do, I'll, I'll solder them and heat shrink them and make a pretty job. Um, I am no electrical person. That's probably sacrilege cutting these cables, but um, I should really have just desoldered them from the pots labeled them on the strands, labeled where they go. Uh, that would have been a much better idea. Uh, oh well, there you go. So, right, I'm just gonna label this up. And it's just the various strut buttons and stuff to take off. Okay, two different systems for attaching the strings uh, which oh, you're not focusing are you uh, right this is the standard system Come on, focus. Oh well, it don't want to focus. Anyway, that's the standard system. The strings. Just go through the end. God. 
This is rubbish for this tripod. <laughs> it's really annoying. Okay. Standard one, ignore the broken bit. Strings just hook in there. But because I'm using short scale and they don't do double ball end strings in short scale, I have this. So, same sort of thing. Not sure which way around it goes. Yeah, same sort of thing, but it'll be just a normal chopped off string goes through the hole and then it's clamped down and held in so I can use a normal normal string there you go that was painful wasn't it right sod the tripod right before this one is put back together after we've um, got all the shape and all the important measurements off of it um, I'm gonna do a, a full setup on it level crown and polish on the neck because um, I haven't done that since I've had it um, and the Fender Jaguar uh, I'm going to take the neck off of that where are you take the neck off of that one uh, to measure up and I am also going to do a level crown and polish on this neck because I haven't done that since I've had it uh, haven't got any issues with it, but while it's off, I'm going to do it anyway, just so that they're nice and all the frets are level and polished. All right, that's it. I've had enough. Uh, whatever the next bit is, uh, you'll see in the next video. All right, hang on. Let's just turn around. Okay, so this is the end of the first instalment. Um, I had great plans to use the tripod and hopefully film it properly. <clears throat> uh, that didn't work out, did it? Um, editing wise, I still haven't got the right facilities to edit properly. Uh, I'm just going to film an extra bit now to put at the beginning to explain that I may not have edited it properly, where there's a section about two minutes long of. Uh, filming the wallpaper so there you go unless I can somehow cut it I don't think I can I've tried it before um, anyway so hoping for <clears throat> is that I can get to Sam's uh, sometime soon and we can have a look at um, how he's building the body uh, now it's not Traditionally, you'd have a big lump of wood or two bits joined together or uh, a cap and a base and all that. Um, we're not doing that, of course. We are going to, we hope, make it all out of reclaimed wood. Um, wood that Sam's got left over from previous guitar jobs. All the offcuts. Yeah, so all Sam's bits of offcuts from all his other guitar builds, odd bits he can't use for anything. Um, he's busy chopping them up into tiny little regular pieces, or say regular, different lengths but the same width. Um, we'll have to. I'll have to go up there and film it. To explain it um, but originally I was saying to Sam why don't we use all your offcuts and make like um, a chopping block type finish um, like a I think it's a chopping block or a butcher's block or it's like a wooden slab with all um, uh, lots of squares and like a chessboard checkerboard um, so that was the original idea, to use offcuts and just make it into squares or whatever, glue them all together. Um, but now he's set up his equipment, chopping saw stuff, um, and he's making tiny little slivers um, of all different woods. So the whole guitar body, if it works, is going to be 
thousands and thousands of little slithers of wood about five mil wide uh, 40 50 mil deep the, the depth of the body and lengths will be varying so uh, it's like matchsticks laid on their sides and glued together um, but of all different woods um, so that's going to be the body if it works you know it might not work and then we were talking about what do we make the neck out of and I was saying to Sam but don't really care as long as it's hardwood uh, anything is fine um, as long as I've got a dark fretboard because I don't like I don't like maple fretboards I only like dark colored uh, <clears throat> so anyway we ended up saying let's build the neck out of all these thousands of little splinters of wood as well just to make it really challenging and unique so poor old Sam has got a lot of work cut out on this one once we get it all done um, I want some mental inlays on the fretboard as well so anyway that's it voice is gone now um, I'll see you next time hopefully we'll be at Sam's looking at the raw materials cheers peace and love I'll be springing <laughs>